Hello stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Nilsville, Wisconsin. You might notice that my background is a little bit different. I'm actually at my mom's house for the week of Thanksgiving here in the United States. We're celebrating a holiday this week. And um, I am here spending the week with my mom. And so I came over to my friend Cindy's house where she is allowing me to use all of her supplies to bring you a fantastic project idea. Today is a blog hop for the Totally Techniques design team. We are using mirroring as our technique and I can't wait to show you what I came up with. Let's flip this camera around and get started. Oh, that looks good. I'm gonna show you all of my cardstock layers before we get busy with this mirroring technique. This is Fresh Freesia. We've got five and a half by eight and a half. We're gonna fold that in half. We're gonna get that edge burnished with the bone folder. And then we have two pieces of basic white. One of those pieces is three and three quarters by five. The other one is four by five and a quarter. And then I've got a basic black that is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then we need basic black and fresh freesia scraps. So we're gonna do the technique first and we're gonna do it on the smaller basic white layer. Now, we have something called a silicone craft mat. And it's a really neat little mat that you can do all kinds of gluing, things on it. It's great for that, but it's also good for this mirroring technique. I'm going to take the Hey Birthday Chick stamp set, and we're going to be using the Birthday Chick dies. I'm going to take the stamp with the chicken and the cupcake, and we're just going to stamp that right down here at the bottom of our layer. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to stamp it on my silicone craft sheet. And it's black ink. We're using Memento black ink. It's kind of hard to see. But now I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to put my white layer on there and give it a good firm press. And you're going to see that other chicken come in. And then I'm going to stamp another chicken. And you can grab a baby wipe or um, a little bit of Stampin' Mist. I wanna just clean this off before I stamp on it again. And everything comes right off of this. So we're going to stamp our chicken again. You want to be careful that you don't slide your chicken around when you're stamping it. I'm going to bring it right in here. And again, nice, firm hand. And there we go. So you can put, you can mirror your images. Our chicken is going this way, our chicken's going that way, this way, and that way. This is just a fabulous technique to be able to make a card with. Okay. Uh, before we put that ink away, let's go ahead and stamp the inside of our card. I brought in this chubby little chicken. She makes me, this hen just makes me giggle. I think she is so cute. So there's our chubby little hen. And then we've got Let's Celebrate You. And now we're done with our ink. I've got a whole bunch of stamp and Blend markers here. So I am using... Um, Real Red Dark, I've got Pumpkin Pie Dark, I've got Light Magenta Madness, I've got Dark Fresh Freesia, gray, Dark Gray Granite, Light Pale Papaya, Dark Daffodil Delight, and Dark Pool Party. So I just picked out a pretty selection of um, Stampin' Blend markers to be using. And I think I think we are going to give our chubby little hen a red comb on her head. And we're going to leave her white for the most part. And we'll give her an orange beak. We used to have chickens when I was a kid. And can I just say, I'm not my favorite. <laughs> they were mean. <laughs> my mom's chickens were mean. 
Okay, and then we're just going to color in all the different aspects. We've got crazy hair chicken here, which is so funny. And you can just pick and choose whichever colors you would like to color your chicken. And I am not going to make you watch me color all of these. But let me just tell you that it is super simple. There's nothing to it. I didn't do anything fancy. I just colored. So I will be back in just a few minutes. So I wanted to show you what I did with the gray granite. And I tend to do this. I want ground underneath each one of my crazy chickens here. So I just come in and add a little bit of ground. And I don't want you to overthink this because while it does just look kind of scribbly to start with, once you're done with it, it looks pretty decent. Like, oh yeah, that is ground, isn't it? Don't you think? I think this is just the easiest way to put some ground in under images. Okay, next up, we had those scraps, right? We have Fresh Freesia and Basic Black scraps. I'm going to use the Happy Birthday. I'm going to die cut one of each of these. I'll be right back. Here we go. Now, I wanted the black to be offset behind the Fresh Freesia just a tad because I think that looks really nice. So we're gonna put a little bit of glue. Don't get too crazy with the glue. Just put a little bit of glue on here. And then we're gonna offset this just a little bit. So just pull it so it's not directly over the black layer. But you can see how having that offset gives you just that little bit of shadow behind it that I think is really neat looking. Next, we're gonna take some dimensionals and I'm going to cut just a couple small slivers from the edges because I don't wanna see the dimensionals through there. I should probably be using black dimensionals, but Cindy had these out on her desk and I will make them work. But black dimensionals would be a really good idea on here too, because then you wouldn't have any chance of seeing them through the front of your happy birthday. I like having that black or white option. Okay, there we go. Just a couple little tiny pieces of dimensionals and get the, whoops, make sure they're stuck on there good and get those backs off. Here comes our happy birthday. See how that black shadowing gives it just a little bit of pop? And now we're ready to assemble our card. So we're going to add a little bit of liquid glue to the back of our colored layer. It's going to give us that little tiny, tiny sixteenth of an inch border that just makes the black pop behind it. Let me make sure I get it in here straight. I don't want to mess it up at this point, right? And then we're going to take our card front and we're going to add this down in here. Now this mirroring technique is really good for, um, let's say you just have a stamp set with perhaps one chicken in it. So you could do a chicken going this way, a chicken going that way. You can do this with any type of images. It's really quite fun. And it just gets gives you more use out of what you've invested in to make what you need. Love, love, love this little chicken on the inside too. Isn't she cute? Okay, you guys, now don't forget, click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm almost up to 25,000 subscribers and I really wanna jump over that number. So yay, right? And also click right up here. That will take you to my blog where you'll find this project. You're also going to find a list of people in this blog hop. This is the Totally Techniques design team. We are demonstrators from all over the world. All of us are Stampin' Up! demonstrators. And everybody's going to be featuring the mirroring technique. So you're going to get a whole bunch of different ideas with this cool technique today. Click up here. If you need to order anything, I am in the United States. And I will put my host code up here on the screen. Please feel free to place an order. I always appreciate your orders. It's what keeps these free videos coming to you. If you're outside the United States, please find one of the demonstrators in your country where you can place an order with them. A complete ingredient list, all the dimensions and details for this card will be listed on my blog at this link. 
Thank you guys so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.